Welcome back, board game family. My name is Brian Greer. You're watching Game Brigade, and today we're going to be diving into an age contrived should you back. This series is designed to help you guys evaluate if this campaign is worth it for you when you're deciding to back those bigger Kickstarter campaigns. So, we're going to dive into this campaign, talk about the publisher, talk about the design, talk about the value, give you as much information as I can provide so you can make the best backing decision going forward. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, let's hit it. Okay, welcome to an age contrived. Now this is by first time designers below's intent. And I've done as much research as I can. I checked their website, I checked their BGG. Uh, as what I can tell, no other design development has gone on with them. So when you're looking at designing or, or backing these companies, uh, know that there is inherently risk when we are backing companies that have no track record. Uh, but from what I'm seeing in terms of the game mechanics and the quality of the components, things are looking up and up. We'll dive into that shortly as we go through the whole campaign. Uh, but first off, first time publisher, first time designer with an age contrived. Now they are currently with nine days left to go in the campaign, $373,000, 3,834 backers. That is killing it for a first time designer. So obviously they're, they're showing something pretty cool here. So what is an age contrived? What is the theme? What are the mechanics? How's the gameplay? We're going to talk about that. Uh, Overall, the theme is set in this land uh, where you are going to be taking on the role of a magical god-like divinity figure. And your goal is to try to get the population of this planet or this world uh, to really um, support you. You know, they want because you, you get your powers from the way, you know, people, um, how much they, they, they like you or how powerful they think you are. Now, uh, mechanically and thematically, I'm seeing a very big disconnect when I watch Game 3. I watched uh, Monique and Naveen play through. I watched a bunch of reviews as well. I don't really see the theme that I just described to you presented very well at all into the mechanics of the gameplay. But the gameplay and the mechanics are taking on a very cool engine builder, tableau building system with a resource management. Now I just threw a bunch of buzzwords at you. What does that mean? Well, let's see if I can slide down to an example. So the majority of your gameplay will be on this section that they're calling resource programming. Effectively, what this means is you're going to have these cubes on the top row and the cubes on the bottom row. Now you are going to use the cubes on the bottom row to take an action. Now the actions are divided based on what is below that. They're going to have specific actions that each row or column is capable of doing. Then you're going to take uh, an upper, uh, one of the upper tiles most likely and uh, assign that to something uh, which is part of the uh, resource management part of the game. Because if you send your tiles onto the board to take advantage of some of these cool abilities, then you're gonna lose some of your resources. So there's kind of this pull and take gameplay mechanics where you're you're programming your, re your, your actions using your resources to do things, but also you have to make sure that you are uh, effectively doing as, as many things as possible. It's a very tight Euro system. Now, like Euros that you know I play, it's hard sometimes for them to implement a theme with a really cool uh, engine system. And unfortunately, I don't think Age Contrived truly knows how to, do, to blend the two. But what I am seeing is I'm seeing a really, really cool, unique, take on this tableau resource management now they are using this uh, interesting little player board as well which has some cool uh, options where you can upgrade it design it uh, change some of the powers and abilities that they can provide as well as your player or your your hero that you select your your individual god has asymmetrical powers i kind of like the idea that everyone starts pretty much the same in terms of their overall powers. Everyone has a little bit of uniqueness, but as you play the game, as you're going through the different actions and selections, you're going to be customizing your board uh, to design whatever uh, goal or achievements you are trying to complete for those player victory points. Uh, so what are you gonna be trying to do? Well, they're showing these beautiful buildings all over the, the player board, as you can see here. Effectively, you are trying to construct these monuments uh, in the thematic sense, they're building 
these monuments, right? The people are building these monuments. And the game will trigger once all these monuments across the board are constructed uh, based on the player count. So like for a two-player game, you have to construct three total monuments. That is the, the rough of it in terms of a very high level overview. Now there are a bunch of different reviews and playthroughs that go into a much deeper mechanical breakdown. But if you're looking for uh, you know, a quick explanation, I think that was a, a pretty good option or, or ability for you. Uh, basically, you're upgrading your resource, you're, you're upgrading your, your player boards, doing different actions, but you really have to understand that, that pull and take for your resource management system. So let's talk about the different pledge levels and the retail availability. Right now, there are three different pledge levels and we're gonna talk about the value later on. So if you're questioning that or asking about that, we'll, we'll also get into that. Right now, each, each contrived offers a core uh, system at $65. Basically says everything that is included in the what's in the box will be available in the core and we'll cover that just here shortly. But you're also going to be adding the Divine Winds module as well as a World Tree Monument. The World Tree Monument being Kickstarter Limited Edition, which is great. Let's scroll down to what is in the box. So to give us a better understanding of what we're looking for in an age contrived, you're going to get the game board. They're actually going to make this double sided. That's one of the stretch goals. But I don't see any differences uh, other than maybe some iconography changes with the double side, which makes me like, why double side it? Why not just do the proper side, the better iconography? Who knows? You're going to get five character miniatures that is included in the core box. So that's pretty cool. A lot of times you'll see in the core or retail version, uh, just like cardboard standees, but they're going to be offering these miniatures. You're going to get the character boards and you're going to get the player boards. The player boards are important to note. So please note what these player boards look like because as we get to the collector's edition and the founder's edition, these will change. You're also going to get the acrylic uh, or plastic, looks like plastic tokens. These are going to be what you're going to be using, utilizing those different resources to take those different actions and also build those monuments. Those are what you use. And then you have the six magnetic monuments. Magnetic. That's the cool part and the unique toy uh, glamification factor of this game. They're trying to really build up that presence for you on the board by having you assemble these structures instead of having them like have cardboard bits where you have to push them together, which would eventually damage the cardboard. These are going to be magnetically attached so they can stick together and as you build them up onto the board. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, kind of gimmicky in some sense, but it does add a new thing that's not very much seen in the board gaming space. You get the channel markers. These are for the individual powers of each character. The bridge tokens. As you uh, have your miniature on the board, you're going to be moving around the board uh, with one of the actions. And sometimes you're going to come across roads that are broken uh, that need to be bridged in some manner. That's what these bridge tokens do. But then they're also going to give you an ability when you go over them. The transmuter tiles, these are the tiles that you're going to be upgrading on your player board to kind of change that Tableau uh, engine that you're, you're, you're building. We're all gonna start with the same Tableau system and then you're going to remove Tableau cards from your game, from your base one, by purchasing new ones and sliding them in in different areas. So that's pretty cool there. Uh, you get 50 transmuter tiles. The conduit tokens, nothing there, just cards. The action tokens, these are those actions that you can upgrade and, and modify and change what your actions provide or what kind of bonuses they can provide. Another awesome way to uh, enhance the uh, asymmetrical powers of each player in an individual game. Uh, achievement tokens, just, you know, as it sounds, uh, ways to get more achievements. First player, player aids. The player aids have been upgraded to 300 uh, stock uh, paper stock, so that's pretty good for that. And then you obviously can get the Divine Winds module and the World Trade model. So this is everything that comes in the core box at $65. Right there is a great value overall in terms of the amount of content and quality of components that you're going to be getting inside this box. When we talk about, I talk about a lot of times um, the value of Kickstarter, you know, where do we get value or um, the lost value? We haven't seen very good games that really offer true value in a long time, especially since the inflation and shipping crises. It's hard to see uh, the value we used to get in 2019 or 2020 and maybe early 2021. But what I see here is a game that's offering a very depth, uh, deep, uh, Euro system with a very unique uh, uh, overall um, uh, uh, like 
build, like this, the way it presents itself on the board at a price that normally I would see this in that 80 price point, sometimes even alone at $99. So at the 65 price point, I think this is actually a very good value overall. And you should ask your local game stores if they are backing this, because you might be able to pick this game up uh, with no shipping at your local retailer if they are backing this, because this is a uh, uh, potentially friendly to local retailers but again they have to be they have to go through a, some sort of program but obviously there's two more pledge levels let's talk about that so let's go and slide up to the top here and take a look at the next two pledge levels the second one is going to be the collector's edition at $99. Now this one is gonna be Kickstarter exclusive or limited. They do say that they're gonna have the option to sell these on their web store. Uh, so these could potentially be available, but I assume the print runs are going to be limited and lower. Uh, so there is going to be obviously a demand for these type of games. But it's going to be interesting as we get into the uh, the value aspect of this, when we get to the later section for value, this is going to be an interesting one for me to evaluate over other games that are pretty, pretty similar. But let's talk about what we're getting in this. First off, you're going to get the game trays insert. So this is awesome if you like to have games that are easy to get to the table and have a system to storing the, the game in the box and keeping everything, everything contained, especially without having to buy an additional type of insert, like a third-party insert or printing a third-party insert if you'd like to do that as well. You're also going to get mechanical steel boards, the player boards. Remember how I told you in the core box, pay attention to these because they're going to change? Well, this is right here the change that I'm talking about. They're going to be taking that cardboard player board and they're going to make it a mechanical kind of toy factor thing uh, where you can actually pull back on these little sections here. I'll kind of circle it here and your the, the chips will fall through. Now, I've watched multiple playthroughs. I've watched multiple reviews. Every single person has said that that is just a toy factor, really doesn't add anything to the gameplay. So don't be looking at this as an enhancement to the gameplay experience. But what it does do is create kind of that um, dual layer player boards feel, and you can still just pull them out like normal, which is what I'd probably do. I don't think I'm ever gonna pull the mechanical system out. It's cute, but I don't think it really adds much value to the overall system. Then we have here the customization option. This company is offering you the opportunity to take your version of the game and customize it. Uh, I believe I kind of was playing with that right here a little bit if you can see that. So what I did here is I have my little quote. I have do or do not. There is no try Yoda. And what you're able to do is actually uh, change the backing of that if you want. Uh, you could have it be just the logo for the character. Uh, like here, this is that little logo, or you can do the character here and, and include the different character that you want to play with. It's pretty sweet. And then you can add the badge if you want it to say collector's edition or not. And I think they're even talking about doing a numbered system. If you want collector's edition, 200 out of 5,000 or something like that. So that is an option for you to customize your your thing and put anything. I don't know, obviously, if they're doing profanity or whatever. I don't know. Don't ask me. Um, try to keep it clean guys. Come on. But this is going to also make the game unique to you, which is cool. So that's part of the collector's edition. You're also going to be adding core, the, the divines module, the world tree monument and everything that was included in the core box obviously is included with the collector's edition, but you're seeing that price point at $99. So really what we're seeing here, the, the metal mechanical steel boards, the personalization option and the game trays is that price increase. Other than that, there's nothing different between the core and the collectors uh, and gameplay options. And now we're looking at the founder's edition, another $20. So what is changing with this? Well, they're going to go ahead and give you the player boards uh, as well. The cardboard player boards are going to be dual sided because there's going to be a different art on whichever one you want to use when you install it into the mechanical player board, which is going to... Um, basically change the look and feel of the overall game. And it's going to be finalized basically like when you build your mechanical player board, that is one way, it can only go one way. So you're gonna actually have the option to play with the, the standard cardboard and then the, the other option, the dual sided option, I'm, I'm assuming. They're also gonna be washing the miniatures. They're gonna be putting that black ink on the miniatures, which really makes any kind of detailing or shadowing or crevices really pop and show the, the full 
detail. It gives a little bit of a color texture too as well. It's pretty cool, but you can also do that yourself. That's something that is totally doable if you are willing to go buy a wash and wash your miniature. It's something that's that's cheap and easy to do. But you're also going to be adding in, um, they add a new variable in ceremony to the age with uh, the, uh, the add infinite expansion, which is, doo -doo -doo. Um, there's another expansion. I don't know where they're putting it. I wish they put it right there. There's going to be an additional expansion that's included with the um, collector, the Founders Edition. Now, this also has a personalized option, if you'd like, where you can go ahead and, and change the, the box. And if we zoom in here, it still says Collector's Edition. I'm not sure if it's going to change the Founders Edition or anything like that. I, I'm not positive. We'd have to we'd have to ask. So. Talking about the stretch goals next, if we scroll on down, from everything I can see from the stretch goals options, it appears to be that it, most of the stuff are going to be included. Oh, here we go. Here's the, uh, the expansion that will be included in the limited edition. So you're going to have this potentially thing that adds more replayability and another monument for you to play around and build with. So let's go on down to the stretch goals. The stretch goals are already what I talked about with that double-sided player board being flipped. Uh, you have some sticker sets so you can attach things to the um, frames to make them a little bit more identifiable. The liner art. Other than these things, so now we're going to start getting into what's identifiable per the version you select. Uh, so if you do the Add Infim expansion, you'll be receiving more advanced tokens. Um, I think they were talking about the Collector's Edition and Founder's Edition box will receive a printed liner. So that will not be in the core box. Otherwise, it's going to look like this. Uh, but overall, there's nothing here that's too shocking or too scary to be like, oh, I'm going to be missing out if I don't back this right now or, or if I get one version over the other. They're pretty basic overall. So let's go to the last part, FAQ, and talk about things that are important to note if you are kind of on the fence about this. Um, and the first one is talking about the $1 pledge to gain access. Yes, you are able to back at $1, but they do say that um, the price will be slightly higher in the campaign if you decide to do a dollar and up your pledge in the pledge manager. Who knows what that might be? Might be 10 bucks, might be 20 bucks, might be five bucks, I don't know. But take aware that if you do decide to do a $1 pledge, they are going to be charging somewhat of a premium for that, for not backing during the campaign. Um, they, so they say the price of add-ons will be the same though, and the pledge manager is on the campaign. These prices will not increase even if you pledge a dollar. So any add-ons will be fine. Uh, will they do a late pledge? No, in order to deliver as quickly as possible, we not, will not be offering late pledges. That's very interesting. So there's gonna be no late pledge option with this campaign. So if you miss this campaign, this is going to be one of your only shots, which is going to increase the demand or the scarcity of this campaign once this uh, total time runs out. And then VAT. Will be people have to be required to be VAT or is it included in the price? It says here that is not included in the price and you'll have to pay VAT once the pledge manager opens and you select your shipping options. So those are very, very important to take note of. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about is the timeline that they have on here, because I think it's pretty cool, as well as the shipping cost. The shipping cost for US, we always talk about US, I'm US based, it's what I bestly know. Core edition, $20, a little high, but there's a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of different components. Collector's edition at 25, founder's edition at 25 is great, especially when you include the mechanical uh, boards as well as additional player boards in some of these editions. So I think it's great that it's $25. It actually pretty, pretty locked in. And then the timeline, I thought this was really interesting. So we're doing March Kickstarter campaign ends. I talked about this in another video, I believe with Alex the Board Game Co, but it hasn't launched yet. We're talking about some of my pet peeves or red flags and not having a defined timeline is always an annoyance for me. So I love when companies do this. But what's great is January 2024 is when they're doing fulfillment on this and where they plan to do fulfillment. That's nine months out. First off, that is very ambitious for a first time creator to do a nine month project. But with the fact that they're doing a set print order with no stretch goals or no stretch goals, with no uh, late pledge, it is gonna be able to give them finalized numbers as soon as this campaign's over to basically once the pledge managers run at six weeks option to get them to the printer and get them to the, you know, get all the papers and projects to the printing and get get started on that right away. So let's go ahead and jump to the main camera as I give you my final thoughts on the overall value. This campaign offers three pledge levels, the core, the collectors, and the founders edition. 
The Founders and the Collectors are harder for me to evaluate. The Founders Edition is at 120. It offers an expansion, which you could probably assume the value is between that $10 and $20. You could probably pay that at retail for the expansion. Uh, and that's Wash Minis. So if you find that that expansion is worth it, or if you think you're going to be playing with that variable expansion, I can see the Founders Edition being more valuable. But I find that a lot of times in these Euro, ga uh, these Euro games that a lot of people don't like playing with expansions, especially with a game that like this one is so mentally dense where there's so much stuff going on that you have to be aware of. Adding in additional components or additional expansions or modules can sometimes be very, very hard for people to overall enjoy. The other aspect is that this is a customizable game. It's one of the first times we're looking at a game that's offering a collector's edition, which is going to be the deluxe version, but it's not that much more deluxe other than the mechanical uh, boards and the game trays inserts, but it's going to be offering a slew of customization op options that might not make it for the next person who is interested in your product. Do you do a quote that maybe that person isn't interested in or do a, a whole in inner border window? It's going to be hard sometimes to evaluate that price. I do think that this game will be worth more than the Kickstarter price that's listed right now. So if you're back in this game and you're unsure if this is going to be a fit for your, your game group, uh, you're probably going to be able to sell it for at minimum what you paid for it, plus maybe a little bit more on top if you need to. Now, this is not an investment, obviously. I'm not suggesting this is an invest investment. But because of the customizational options, I'm not sure where I could see this going on the higher end. So just be aware of that. Back this game, make customize it to be where you would feel comfortable, that would be happy for you and make you feel complete in your collection. But know that some decision-making processes could limit the buyer pool if they cared. Some people might not care. They just like, I want that game and I want the insert, I want the game trace. But that would limit the you know total buyer pool potentially. Would I recommend it back in this game based on what I've seen? It's a solid game. It looks great. I would love to recommend this game. And so I'm giving it my seal of approval for uh, overall mechanical gameplay experiences in a Euro system. It looks great. I wish the theme meshed better with the gameplay, but that's sometimes so hard for Euro games to figure out. They just can't seem to figure out ways to get the theme to play in with the mechanics that you're doing, the options. But what I do see here is a game that offers a really tight resource management system and offers people multiple ways to play the game because it's going to be challenging you based on what your opponents are doing, the decisions processes they make. You're going to have to be on uh, changing your systems overall. So that's my overall uh, opinion of Age Contrived. Very, very impressed with this first time publisher uh, Bellows Intent has provided us. Uh, if you guys like this uh this type of conversation and should you back series let me know in the comment section down below leave a comment let me know say or you can say hey brian you're totally wrong i totally disagree with you it could happen let me know i'd like to hear about it leave a comment subscribe leave a thumbs up talk to you soon Bye bye